Ladies and gentlemen, right before we get into today's episode, head on over to my website at chasinglatitudes.com and sign up for the newsletter. We have some incredibly exciting things coming over the next six months, and I want you to be in the know first. So head off anywhere in the world to any marina and it will become readily apparent instantly that there is no perfect sailboat for everyone. At each marina there are various different makes and models ranging from classics to brand new high-end custom sailboats. So when buying yourself a sailboat there are some things that you really really need to consider. So tip number one, remember the 30 to 70 rule. This is a good basic rule to keep Keep in mind, the builder of the vessel makes 30% of the boat and they wind up purchasing the remaining 70% from their suppliers, almost all of which has to obviously be periodically replaced at even higher and higher prices. The 30 to 70 rule helps you understand why there is so much depreciation when it comes to sailboats. Generally speaking, you're gonna lose about 50% of the boat's purchase price in the first five years, and over the first decade, it will have dropped somewhere in the 70% range. So keep that in mind, the 30 to 70 rule, buying newer is not always better. Tip number two, the total cost of acquiring your new to you fancy dancy yacht. There are numerous different things that pop up throughout the buying process that are going to cost you money. There will inevitably be some sort of work that needs to be done to about any sailboat that you purchase. That you can safely usually assume it will be right around 10% of the cost. So if buying yourself a $100,000 sailboat, you can assume pretty easily that you're gonna have to drop about an additional 10K into the vessel itself. Now that might be things like life rafts, life jackets, e perbs a dinghy, or other things. But safely assume about 10% of your purchase price is going to instantly be dumped directly into the vessel. Now on top of that, we also have our survey and haul out fees. You can safely assume on about any vessel you're going to have roughly $5,000 invested on top of the acquisition. Now this is going to cover your survey, your haul out, your resplash, getting your initial insurance, usually depending on the size of the vessel and what insurance you're getting, as well as your first month's marina fee somewhere so that you can then do the work on the vessel. So all in all, we can safely assume if you're buying a $100,000 vessel, you're gonna have about $15,000 on top of that right out of the gate. That's between your insurance, marinas, haul outs, surveys, and all of those things, as well as the basics for the vessel, life raft, e things like that. So just keep that in mind. If your all-in maximum budget for a sailboat is $100,000, what you really need to be looking at is a vessel that's $85,000, preferably 80. You do not want to max your budget out just on the vessel cost, because then you're not gonna be able to pay for this other stuff. You're not gonna have money for a survey or a haul out or moving the boat, your initial deposit on your insurance and things like that. That's like buying a Ferrari and not having gas to go anywhere. So we don't wanna do that. Keep that in mind, 15% of your vessel's initial purchase price will instantly be put right back into the vessel. And that is just to get things up and going because again, there's gonna be things on the vessel you have to buy in order to be able to sail it initially. And this is just a good general rule of thumb. None of this is set in stone. It can be more and it can also be less. Tip number three, don't be a sucker. Now, when brokers list boats on Yacht World and other places, everyone loves to list out this long list of these nonsense so-called upgrades and additions to the vessel. More often than not, those upgrades are not worth anything. Very rarely are you gonna come across a vessel that has brand new lithium batteries and a thousand watt solar system. It's going to be these very basic minor upgrades on the vessel might have a new house battery bank might have a couple of solar panels but i can guarantee you more often than not those are going to be the least expensive solar panels possible 
When it comes to having sails on a vessel, your average sail lifespan, depending on the use of the vessel, can be somewhere between around three and eight years, give or take a year on either side of that. So when a vessel is listed for sale and someone says, brand new sails, 2015, my dude, those are not new, man. Those need to be replaced right about yesterday. So don't be a sucker and be fooled by a long list of nonsense in a listing. You actually have to go to the vessel, inspect it, and determine what that stuff is actually worth. A brand new flat screen on a TV doesn't mean shoo, because flat screens don't cost anything and it doesn't do anything to help your vessel actually sail. It's just a bunch of nonsense. Sometimes there'll be fantastic upgrades, but more often than not, it's gonna be a long list of silliness that does nothing for you and you could have done it yourself for far cheaper than you're gonna wind up paying for that vessel. Tip number four, be prepared when it comes to so-called refits. Now again, often on Yacht World, boats are listed as recently refitted, and that is rarely if ever the case. A major refit will involve the rig as well as the engine. After around 15 to 20 years, it's long past time to pull the mast off, upgrade the standing rigging, the terminals, take apart the spar and inspect for crevice corrosion and cracks, replace your blocks, inspect the sheaves and mast step, and beef up your gear as necessary. For extended offshore use, the general rule of thumb is to replace everything with heavier rigging and equipment. Now, most vessels are listed as having a recent refit and none of this stuff is done. It's a recent quote unquote cosmetic refit. So keep in mind, if you're looking at vessels that are 15 to 20 years old, you're going to have to be the one to be doing that major refit, whether you want to or not, because again, things on sailboats have a life span. So keep the major refit costs in mind if looking at vessels in that age range. Tip number five, after two decades of someone sailing off on their adventures, it's time to pay the engine reaper. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, two decades on a sailboat, it's coming to that time where you can either rebuild your current engine or you can replace it. Something to keep in mind is that removing your engine and installing a new one is going to equal the cost of basically buying a rebuilt engine. Now that of course depends on how hard it's going to be for you to get that engine out. However, at this time, our engines are wearing out. And yes, they can go further depending on how they were maintained. So don't use this one as a hard and fast rule. Just keep that in mind when you're buying a sailboat. If that vessel's 20 years old, you really need to be taking a close look at that engine. How many miles are on the engine? How well was it maintained? How does it look cosmetically? Does it look like nobody ever even opens up the engine compartment? Because if so, guess what? We're at that time where it's probably going to fall on your shoulders to eat that huge cost of either rebuilding it or replacing it. So keep that in mind, that 15 to 20 year mark, it's time to at least at minimum take a very close look at the engine and see if you're going to be the one eating that cost or was it perfectly maintained and you're not going to have to worry about that for another decade. But make sure you put that into your criteria when looking at used sailboats. Now, if you do need help getting on the water sooner than later in the most cost-effective manner possible, head on over to my website at chasinglatitudes.com and sign up for a consulting package. You can do a quick one-on-one -on -one consult with me for only 100 bucks to get you pointed in the right direction. You can buy a package of consults to help you narrow down your boat search, or you can buy the complete package where I will walk you through everything from inception to the finish line. And while you're on my website, sign up for that newsletter as I have some really, really exciting things coming up. Also, our patrons are the only way the channel keeps pumping out this many videos. Consider becoming a patron and you get access to our members area where I have several hundred members all active and looking for boats and talking sailing every single day. So come be a part of the community, hit patron, sign up for 10 bucks a month, and hopefully I will see you sooner than later.